Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Road to Ranked Roulette series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and we are going to be kicking off in this series again today with your nominated Pokemon, throwing them into the roulette wheel and determining our team of six to take on to the battle spot ladder for the remainder. So, thank you so much before we get into anything for all of the nominations that you guys have provided me with this week. Going through the list before I threw them into the wheel was amazing. So we'll get to the draw in a moment, but before we do, last Last week on the channel we had a bit of a giveaway uh, for you guys to say a little thank you for all of the support that you give the channel and myself and all the content that I do and uh, this lovely I Heart Flinch hat was up for grabs for one of you lucky people and I did the roulette spin earlier on and the winner was announced so congratulations to Dustin Voiles you're up on the screen right now so thank you so much for entering everyone commiserations to those of you that didn't win but congratulations to Dustin do message me on the back end of the channel or Twitter Facebook or Instagram or any any of the other social handles that you can get a hold of me on let me know your address and I'll get that posted straight out to you and if you guys out there that didn't win would like to grab yourselves one of these hats you can pick them up over on our flinch.com website the link is down in the description below we have this hat among many other really nice ones where you can rock out with them looking all trendy and cool and representing the flinch squad which is what we are all about so getting into today's episode Last week on the channel, we had a really good start, so I'm hoping we can continue that on today. We mixed up the team. We got a little bit bitten when we did that last week, and things didn't go as planned. So, as I say, I'm hoping things go a little bit better this week. I'm excited for the draw this week, so without further ado, let's jump over to the roulette wheel and see which six Pokemon we'll be taking forward onto the ladder this week. <laughs> team again this week we've got some amazing pokemon and finally one thing that we have got is that giratina that david you've been pushing for every single week so thankfully and i'm so pleased that we do have that pokemon included in the team this week it's made up of feraligator the giratina the infernape the dialga what else have we got? We've got the Tapu Koko and Mega Gallade. So we've got quite a nice combination of Pokemon. Very odd selection of Pokemon, but it should be a lot of fun on the less. The team is down in the description below. There's a raw paste and a poker paste. You can check out all the details of the team. We've picked some really kind of obscure sets to match the team makeup. And for those of you that did nominate Pokemon that haven't had them selected just yet, we have four bonus buttons that we can activate come Wednesday through to Friday. For those extra nominations to have another the chance to be thrown into the team so do not be do disheartened yet um, and we'll also be putting up another nomination poll on the channel later in the week for next week on the channel so I guess we have to have a look at the team and then get on to the battle spot we got the music is on yeah all ready to go so that's excellent and then we can take a look at the team which is right here on your screen in front of you right now We'll just hop over so we've got the bottom screen there for seeing our rating when we go into the, the matches. And uh, you can see it is made up of the Feraligator, the Giratina. The Feraligator went for a Dragon Dance set. We've got the, um, oh, what is it, Sheer Force ability on there. And Giratina Origin or origin Form? Origin Form? I, one of them. It's got the Giratina. Gyrius Orb, if I can even speak today, help me, please. Uh, Infernip, we've got the Focus Sash on there, Fake Out Support, obviously very good, close combat. Flare Blitz, and I'd give a Taunt to have us a, a little option against things like Xerneas setting up, because otherwise it can get a little bit scary, and we haven't got too much on the team to deal with it. Saying that, we do have the Dialga, which I put the choice specs on, so we can pick up a clean one-hit KO if we do by some 
chance to outspeed it after a tailwind from maybe Giratina. Uh, we've got Tapu Koko. I didn't go for the Bandit set that Johnny advised. Maybe we, we bring that in later in the week, but I went for a mixed set with Wild Charge, Thunderbolt, Dazzling Gleam, and Protect. Just gives us a nice versatility to hit a, a wide variety of things like Eveltal, even the Assault Fest that could cause this team a few issues, and then Mega Gallade, which is a very cool Mega. Going to be hitting super hard with that Psychic and Fighting type that it does have, and the Wide Guard support as well. Like I say, the team is down in the description below. If you want to check out all the details that EVs spreads and things go and be my guest but uh, without further ado we'll jump into it guys I guess we need to get some music on ratings not great but we're not going to talk about rating we're not going to jinx ourselves this week and if you do enjoy this sort of content please remember to drop a like on the video do subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content and leave your comments down below and uh, make sure to keep an eye out because we will be doing another giveaway very soon for some flinch squad merch hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our first opponent Oh, this team as well. I don't know. I'm really excited to use it because it's got some like Pokemon that I just love in here. Obviously, the, the Giratina and Infinib actually are a pretty decent combination between the two of them. You know, we saw like it was a very popular combination back in 2010 when the restricted format first came around. Dalga as well, I really like. Dalga's just a Pokemon that I just really have a lot of love for. And, you know, later in the week, if we want to change things up, we could also go down a Trick Room route, but it does mean that we're going to need probably some Trick Room Pokemon to complement that, which we don't really necessarily have at the minute. Uh, the Mega Gilead is another one that I do really like as well. And then the Feraligator with that sheer force ability uh, can hit like a truck, especially if we can get a Dragon Dance off. And something like Infernip can really help provide the, the room we need to do that. It looks like it's going to take a little longer to find our first opponent than I would have liked. So I'm just going to cut it here and we'll come straight back when we find our first opponent. And we've got a first opponent of the episode, so Jerry X. And we'll hop straight over into Team Pre. So, first opponent today, running a team of uh, Rayquaza, Xerneas, Tapu Fini, Incineroar, Amoongus, and Nihiligo. So, that's super standard X Ray Core that we're seeing. You know, you've got the support options there with the Tapu Fini, uh, the Mystic Terrain support. It's also got Icy Wind support, and it's just madness. Here's probably as well than the Incineroar. We know what Incineroar does Fake Out support, Intimidate support. Slow pivot, the Amoongus, uh, gonna be a pain, but we do have our Tapu Koko to help against that spore uh, threat that is there, and then the Nihiligo as well. I feel like Dialga has a really good time here. The only thing on the team that really does threaten us is possibly the Earth Power on the Rayquaza. Um, obviously the Xerneas being set, getting set up as well, um, and the Flare Blitz from the Incineral, but I feel like we've got enough to kind of deal with those. I wanna bring the Infernip just to get around um, the Xerneas uh, setting up turn 1 because of the taunt we've got on there and I will lead I think with Dialga, I want to bring Giratina as well one of the things we could potentially do is lead the Infernip uh, and Giratina so we've got the ability to Tailwind taunt turn 1 if we wanted to um, mm, oh Giratina do we want to bring you Maybe, t definitely Tapu Koko and Giratina or Galid. I'm going to go Giratina. Uh, ah, the choices, the choices. They're so difficult. Uh, let's see. Well, this is a good test for the team because this is one of the more solid teams you're going to see in the format this season. So, I mean, it's going to be a big test, but hopefully we can overcome it. I feel like Dalga is going to have to play a big role here. The Amoongus is going to be really annoying to deal with, but there's... Uh, well, we're just going to have to see what we can do, aren't we? Right, so I'm going to see the Rayquaza and we're going to see the Nihiligo come out for my opponent. Um, got to fake out. Got to fake out the Rayquaza. we we'll probably lock into... Do we lock into Flash Cannon? Like, Dragon Pulse is really tempting here, but knowing that it's a Salt Vest Ray... Uh, the, the Flash Cannon is probably better because just the fact that we can um, hit the Xerneas if it comes onto the field as well and Dialga is still in play. I'm going to lock into it. I don't expect it to pick up the knockout, but you never know. I'm not really too au fair with my choice specs calcs with Dialga. Um, and if it does lock into the Earth Power as well, that's the other thing, like, you know... Uh, Infernip should outspeed the Nihiligo, so we can pick up the knockout there the next turn with cross combat if we want to. 
um, and we can always readjust ourselves with Dialga to come in later in the game. Requires that going to Mega Evolve. It's going to activate that lovely animation we call Delta Stream. Um, the Nihiligo is just going to protect you. It's just fine. The Nihiligo on these teams normally have um, the Z move, so that's that's something that we can we can reliably knock out with close combat this next turn. Um, and then we can. I think what the best thing to do is probably switch into Giratina because it's got the the orb. It's floating. It's not affected by Earth Power, and I think that's what you probably go for with the Rayquaza into that Dialga slot to try and get some damage off there. Could be wrong, could go for a, a Dragon Ascent into Infinite, but I don't mind in the minute because we are sashed. Uh, it does make things a little bit more difficult. Okay, Incineroar coming in, I don't mind this either. It's going to take a chunk of damage from close combat, isn't it? And my opponent knows as well with the, the Flash Cannon coming out, so... Uh, we'll just save you for later, Dalga. Uh, bring in Giratina. She isn't the best matchup for the um, Incineroar. Interesting that our uh, Infernip actually had speeds. Requires her. It's a slow, slow Requires her. And it is going for the Dragon Ascent. It's probably going to be into. Yeah. Infernip. Okay. Nice. We'll take us down to our Sash. We'll reduce its. And defenses a little bit as well. Um, I think what I'll do this next turn is bring in Tapu Koko, preserve Infernip for later and Ron in the game, so we can preserve that fake out at least. Um, do I set up a Tailwind now? Might be a nice opportunity to get a Tailwind. We can't be faked out. Um, we could get doubled into, but I think if you're the Rayquaza, you probably got to go for the Extreme Speed into Infernip to try and remove it from the, from play really. Uh, otherwise, it's going to pick up the knockout on Incineroar. So that's a, the kind of lines that I'm thinking along what my opponent wants to probably try and do. And we're just going to say fake out into Coco and Crunch. No! Okay. It's not ideal, but it's not the worst by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, so Crunch. It's an interesting one. You don't see it too often. Um, okay. Well... It's definitely a Salt Vest Rayquaza. I don't know if a Dazzling Gleam will pick up the knockout onto Incineroar. That's the thing. Um, we could just Thunderbolt. Uh, oh, do we? Hmm. Oh, I wonder what to do. Because I could just Thunderbolt the Incineroar for, uh, for a knockout. We will pick up the knockout there for sure. Um, we could Shadow Ball. Rayquaza now just to get some damage onto it, which might be good to put it in in, in Dragon Pulse range. Um, yeah, I'll just lock into those two. We don't need to switch around. We need to try and keep momentum with our Tailwind while we've got it, because that's one of the, the the problems that we've had in the past. Where um, okay, we're going to see Rayquaza. We're going to see Moongus come onto the field now. So we know my opponents for Pokemon. It's funny that they've not brought the Xerneas and, and kind of, to be honest. I'm kind of thankful for that, really. Uh, we are going to get a Shadow Ball into this Amoongus here. We've still got our Tailwind set up, so that's nice. And that's good damage onto the Amoongus. Like, that's really good damage. I'm happy with that. Uh, the Amoongus is still a problem for us to deal with, of course. Uh, I wonder if the Rayquaza comes back onto the field now. But once the Amoongus is gone, you think, how does my opponent really have a way to deal with Dialga? Um, they didn't reveal Earth Power, and I think if they had Earth Power, they might have used it already. But you've got to think you have Earth Power on. Um, Rayquaza. Uh, right, we could go for. I mean, we could just switch in Dialga here. There's not really too much that threatens us. Um, and we could Earth Power the Nihiligo. Yeah, I'm just going to do that. Get some damage onto it. <coughs> Just got to be a bit careful around this Amoongus. That's the only thing. The Amoongus can still be a bit of a pain. But we do have Infernip. Um, obviously, it's not going to be straightforward um, <laughs> in dealing with it. It's bringing Infernip in because we've still got to deal with the Rayquaza. But you think it probably has Dragon Ascent, Extreme Speed, Crunch, and I would have said Earth Power, but who knows? Who knows, man? 
Uh, we'll get the Alga in. There's a Rage Powder. Okay, so we'll get an Earth Power into that slot. It means that if um, Giratina is sticking around this next turn, we will be able to pick up the Knockout with a Shadow Ball, which is very nice. Uh, and we are going to see a Continental Crush from this Nihiligo. Hopefully, uh, I'll be into the Giratina for sure. You've got to, you've got to think 100% it will be into that slot. Just to get rid of it. Um, yeah. But it means we get Dialga in for free, and I think a Dragon Pulse would probably be enough would be enough to... T wow! <laughs> Giratina is just such a boss. It is such a boss. Um, do we lock into Dragon Pulse now? I'm going to probably do that into the Amoongus. Um... Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. And we'll go Shadow Ball into the Nile Eagle. I'm not really too scared of what my opponent can do now. Because I think either attack from... Like, the, the Shadow Ball f should get the Amoongus. The Dragon Pulse will not do a massive amount to Nile Eagle, But, I mean, Nile Eagle's not really doing too much back to Dialga, which is the main thing. It can definitely get a Beast Boost here, which is a little bit scary. But, again, I think we're kind of fine with Infernip. If Infernip's our last Pokemon... Okay, so we're just going to see uh, Protect there from the Nile Eagle. I'm not going to do anything. And double Protect. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Once it's all out this Tailwind, that's the thing. Um, but I think we'll Protect. Yeah, we'll just go for the Dragon Pulse into the Amoongus. We'll Protect Giratina. Because like I say, I don't really want to just freely give away a Beast Boost to the Nile Eagle. And Giratina is kind of a prime target for that right now. So if we just... We play a bit smarter about it. We don't need to freely give that away. Um, and then once we get rid of the Amoongus, uh, the Rayquaza is going to be mince me. It's just about this Dragon Pulse really taking down the Amoongus. And from this range, Choice Specs, Dragon Pulse, Stabbed, you, sh you would imagine it's enough to take down the Amoongus, or it should be. So we'll get the Protect off with the Giratina. We're going to see the Rage Powder again from this Amoongus. So wants to try and protect that. Now you go a little bit further. We're going to see, yeah, the power gem into that slot and the Dialga left free as a bird. Is Dialga a bird? 100% a bird, isn't it? <laughs> it's a bird right now. Okay, it takes down the Amoongus. We've got that Requaza to deal with. Uh, we've got a pretty nice switch into um, Tap Coco if we want to, um, which might deny the Nile Eagle getting a beast boost because I think Tap Coco coming in will probably be able to. Um, take at least a power gem and a dragon pulse <sighs> behind the assault vest I don't know if it'll be enough choice specs will be enough it might be, who knows depends what the Giratina, uh, the, the Rayquaza has got though so we'll get Coco back onto the field once again, get this terrain set up and let's see. Oh, it has got Earth Power. It is going for it. Yeah. Oh, okay, we can take that. That's good. No special defense investment. Not so good. Okay. All right, Coco definitely in extreme speed range. How much is this going to do? Let's see. Come on. Pick up the knockout. Oh, it's so close. It's so close. We could actually... Um, Force the Rayquaza to go for an extreme speed here into uh, the Coco because if they don't, then Dazzling Beam picks up the knockout. And then if they do that, then it leaves. It leaves. Uh, okay, so that's fine. Uh, it would have just left Dialga free to get the Dragon Pulse onto Rayquaza if that's what the the, the Ray did go for. Um, but fortunately, that's not the case, so that's fine. Uh, we pick up the knockout there. We will lose Tap Kogo, but it's a very worthy worthy trade here as um, the Nihiliga does pick up the knockout. We'll get a Beast Boost, probably in Special Attack. Yeah, uh, and we'll get a, a Dragon Pulse. It'll be interesting to see how much this does for the Nihiliga here. But it's not bad. It's not bad. It'll go down the next turn, but you know, we've got Infernape to come in now. And we're going to be off to a good start in our first our first match today in episode one. So that is excellent for us. I mean, pretty fortunate, to be honest, where we've had a very, 
very good matchup here, I feel, and I think my opponent not bringing the Xerneas made it a little bit easier for us as we do see the forfeit come out. So very good game to my opponent, but like I say, a nice way for us to kick off today and uh, a victory is always, always welcome for our first match or any match that we have in this series. So we'll hop over to our main screen so we can take a look at what our rating looking like going into our second match today. Right, and hopefully it doesn't take too long again to find our next opponent. Opponents are getting harder to find at the, at the moment, I'm finding. Um, so I'm having to, to cut more and more videos where <laughs> it obviously makes more sense when the season starts let's go ultra recon squad because we've not had this for a long time uh, so 1442 creeping up towards our target which we're not going to talk about but hopefully we can get there and hopefully by saying that 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 is not the jinx that we've been mentioning so as I say, hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our next opponent. And I did put a poll up. Um, just a, Well, it wasn't a poll, but I put a question up on the YouTube channel last Wednesday or Thursday asking you guys if you'd like to see more comp a more competitive series. So the School of Hard Knocks coming back. Uh, so we concentrate more on, on the competitive side of things. And, you know, I have always said all along, this series is like a stopgap until the new rules got announced. Um, one of the things that I will do as soon as the new rules for the 2020 season are announced we will probably put this on hold and then move into that competitive competitive games and things like that but in the meantime I might be throwing up some episodes here and there with some competitive teams so they'll be up around 7pm on an evening so keep an eye out for those and I definitely will tweet those out when they are coming out uh, just follow me Osiris VGC over on Twitter and um, you'll get the notification if you don't get it on YouTube. But let's get into our next team preview. So our next opponent is running a very cool team of Tapu Lele, Parasect, Camerupt, Salamence, Palkia, and Dawnwings Necrozma. Man, this looks in insanely good. I love the, the concept of this team. It's um, made up, it's got a lot of Trick Room Pokemon here with the Palkia being one of them and the Dawnwings Necrozma having access to that but we could also see Ultra Necrozma would make sense with that Tapu Lele it could be double Mega as well, the Mega Camerupt and then the Mega Salamence and then the Parasect there is obviously Dry Skin, really good Pokemon to bring in for something like uh, Kyogre so this team is really set up well against Kyogre, thankfully we haven't got Kyogre um, again Dialga is not bad here to be honest, I'm gonna bring Dialga um, Infernip as well. We have to watch out for the Tapu Lele, of course. Um, but we could bring Tapu Koko. I think that could be decent, especially if the Ultron of Crossman makes an appearance. And then do we want to bring Mega Gallade here or probably Giratina again? I think we'll lock in. So we've got the, the same four again, but it, it feels like the Giratina, Infernip, Dialga, and Tapu Koko show today, which it might well be, but we've got more games tomorrow coming up. and way more opportunities throughout the week to feature these other Pokemon. I really want to see a bit more from Feraligatr and Mega Gallade as we go through the week. So that regardless of results and maybe regardless of teams, we'll just force bring those later in the week. But maybe maybe we'll be a bit more concise about it and think about it. So we're going to lead off with Dialga and Infernip here. Obviously, we can't fake out with our Infernip because of the Tapu Lele's terrain, which does is a little bit conflicting. But... And we have got an opportunity to get rid of either one of these targets with Dialga if we'd like. we just got to pick which one we want to remove from the field. Now, I do wonder how much a Flare Blitz will do to this Tapu Lele from our Infernip. Um, and do we need Infernip for later on in the match? Possibly not. Um, so I'm kind of inclined to go... Like, how useful is Dragon Pulse going to be here? It's pretty good against most things other than the Tapu Lele. Um, so, and I know a Dragon Pulse will get the Palkia, so I'm going to actually go for that. And I'm going to go for a Flare Blitz into the Tapu Lele here. Because Infernip with the Sash will be able to take an attack. No! No! <laughs> Ally Switch Lele, are you kidding? Are you kidding? Okay, we're going to get this. Really weak flare blitz. Break our sash unintentionally though, for no reason. Oh, that's a sh that, that is a shame. Dragon Pulse doesn't affect the Lele. And there's a the trick room. Okay. Trick of the room. Hmm. Well. Uh, right. 
I've got to go Dragon Pulse. I'm not calling. I'm not falling for the the. If we get Ally Switch again, that's fine. I'm gonna have to bring in Giratini here. I think it's better than Coco at the moment. We just taunted the Lele, but why would we taunt a Lele when we expect it to be scarfed? Um. Yeah, there's no. There's just a side shot coming out. Okay. Oh, it does a lot of damage, doesn't it? It's life orbed, man. But we're actually slower than the Palkia, so it kind of works in our favor a little bit. The Lele is slower than everything, though, which is interesting. Um, but we do pick up the knockout onto the, the Palkia before we can do anything, but it's done the damage with that <coughs> trick room setup, unfortunately. We're going to have to see if there's a way for us to um, play around this as the camera pips the field now, which is not ideal. Uh, Okay, mm. and it's going to be mega camera up. What have we got to bring in, which we can uh, we can stall things out? I don't think very much. And I don't think we're going to be able to take another side shock from this Lele, unfortunately. Um, hmm. Coco at the minute. It's probably better to bring in just to change the terrain. And then the next turn we can try and bring in Infernape, fake something out like the Mega Camera, do something with Giratina, maybe switch back into Dialga there, um, and try and stall this Trick Room out. We're going to lose a lot of resource in the meantime doing this. But I really didn't see this coming. Ah, okay, so Camera Up, going to Mega Evolve. And the Lele. What are you going to do? Just side shock the Giratina again? I would imagine Earth Power coming out. Oh, Eruption. Even better. Not so good. Um, okay. There's a Lele Moonblast. Alright. Right, now we'll bring in Infernape. I'm hoping Giratina can take an Eruption from the camera up. I think we maybe might be able to, because if we can Shadow Ball the Lele and fake that out, then I think we should be able to remove it from the field. Camera up, it's just about whether that eruption takes Giratina down. It's a pretty powerful eruption, but it might go for Earth Power into Infernip, but it is just going for the eruption again. Infernip should be able to take this. Yeah, we take it with both, so that's, that's really good for us. Uh, it's long as we can take down the Lele with the Shadow Ball, we can okay okay we're not out of we're not out of it just yet we still got to solve this this um this trick room out though and i think we might have <sighs> too many turns to go as the necrozma comes back onto the field and it's probably going to be well is it going to be ultra necrozma or is it going to be no more necrozma <sighs> let's go for a close combat and how many turns we got left now one okay um could we tailwind or isn't the crossmo just gonna go uh i'll protect i'll protect giratina yeah i'll protect let's stall out this turn of tail what trick room so we've done pretty well to get this far come on infernip if you can ever take an attack please take this one please Infernip, you did well, my fiery friend, Moonguy's Beam. Um, can well, you know what? A Specs Earth Power might be enough to get to get the camera up. It's whether or not a Shadow Ball is enough to get the Dawn Wings could possibly be. Um, Choice specs, like it is four times weak to it, so we might be able to do it. And let's go for the Shadow Ball. If we can pull out a surprise win here, that would be incredible. But, of course it's Ultra Necrozma. No. Ah. <laughs> of course it is. Can't sign it. There's a Moonguys Beam. It's going to get rid of the Giratina. If it doesn't mind, then, yeah. 
It's all about whether we can get rid of the camera up now. Come on, let's do this. Come on, Dialga. Easy! Okay. Can we beat the Ultra Necrozma? It's definitely got Earth Power, though. That's the problem, I think. And I don't think we can take three Earth Power. I don't think we can take more than two Earth Powers. Uh, so, let's go. But we're locked into Earth Power ourselves. I mean, if we locked into Dragon Pulse, it was a sacrifice there that we couldn't really afford to make, though. Because uh, Dragon Pulse wouldn't take down the camera up, I don't think. Depends what we can do. Let's see. Oh, man. No. It's too powerful. Ugh. It's like the whiff. <laughs> the most whiffiest end to a match. Uh, we can only do one thing. Um, and then Earth Power will take down Dialga, unfortunately. I mean, it's it's decent enough to take an Earth Power from an Ultra Necrozma anyway. But just not quite enough there. Mm, just trying to think where we could have went. Like, the Trick Room going up was really, really where it threw us. And I'm just putting this down to a best of one game where Ally Switch has completely screwed us, you know. Gone into a game two against this sort of team. It's not so bad because you, you expect that. You can set up a little bit differently and you're more aware of what your opponent is um, is going to lock into. I'm sorry, my opponent. I'm not wasting time. I just didn't click right through with the moves. Here we go. So there you go. Uh, very good game to my opponent. So we're one and one with the team kicking off today. So, I mean, it can't be too sad. This second game was still a lot closer than probably a lot of our other weeks have been in opening games so I'm pretty happy with how we've done today obviously not super happy because two wins would be super happy but one and one isn't the worst thing in the world and we're still kind of hanging in there we also haven't featured the Feraligate or the Mega Gallade yet so we've got a lot of excitement to come from those two remember we can't activate any buttons bonus buttons until the Wednesday this week so the, the third day in our weekly cycles um, so we're going to be sticking with this team for tomorrow uh, hopefully we can bring that Feraligate and the Mega Gallade and have a bit of action from those two but if not, then this team's been doing great so far. I hope you guys have been enjoying it. Do leave your comments down below. Let me know what your thoughts are on today's team. And uh, we'll catch up for another episode tomorrow. So until then, take care of yourselves, whatever you're doing. And I'll see you all for that episode then. So until then, take care and bye-bye.